Hello, welcome to the uh, our last part of this this week. Um, so this week you've been learning about how to use the design recipe to solve word problems and you didn't just learn about it but you practiced using the design recipe to write computer programs to solve several word problems, several word problems. So today um, we're gonna um, look also at using the same techniques to, to solve algebra problems. So the real power of programming isn't how well you know the language. It's how well you can use that language to solve problems. So you've learned a powerful tool that helps to take word problems on paper and turn them into functions on the computer. The design recipe. It turns out the design recipe can be used to solve word problems in algebra too. So let's turn to page 39 in your workbook and read the word problem carefully. So go ahead and pause for a second and uh, turn to page 39. But I have the, um, the problem here also. So um, a rocket is flying from Earth to Mars at 80 miles per second. Write a function that describes the distance d the rocket has traveled as a function of time. So go ahead and write the contract for that. So pause and do that. Okay. So the distance the rocket traveled is measured in the number of miles and time is measured in seconds. So the contract, if distance um, is the name of the function, which I, I think on your, uh, in your book they called it d, but here they called it distance. So that's the function name, and it takes in a number, and it gives out a number. All right, so let's think. Um, and in fact, I'm going to write that in bracket. Um, and I'll use D since that's what the book used. So we're going to have a function D and it's going to take in a number and it's going to produce a number and let's do the let's see do you have a place in your book yeah to do the um, purpose statement yeah you have a place for the purpose statement so I'll do that here too let's see Frying. So we're at a function that describes the distance the rocket has traveled as a function of time. So we want to um, produce the distance given time. All right, so it's going to take in a distance and give a time. So our function will produce the distance given time. Um, uh, let's see. And the rocket's flying from Earth to Mars at 80 miles per second, given time at the rate 80 miles per second. All right, so let's look at, let's do an example. So we want to say, D given time, so let's do how about D at one? So going for one second. All right, so how so if it was going for one second, it would go 80 miles because it goes 80 miles per second, right? So that's multiply 1 times 80. Okay, let's look at an example. Let's do 50. D given 50 seconds will be going times... 
Oh, so it seems like I've got one more. I've got an extra. Hey, that didn't look right. There. All right. So how do we define that? Define. Let's see. So let's 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 make sure we follow the steps. All right. So what's changing here? It's the the one and the fifty. Okay. So and that is the um, time. All right. That's the time that we're going at that rate. So let's define. D time to be multiply the time times 80. Sorry, I must have forget. Let's do that. There. Define D time. There. All right. And they did a couple of examples, so you can fill in those examples. Now, we can turn that into an algebra formula. Like this. So if that's the the racket function, then we can say that d of t of time equals time times 80. So is that how they wrote it here? Yeah, so the distance at the time that is, is 5, 5 times 80. So now a lot of times in algebra, we'll write, we, we won't use long variable names, so a lot of times in algebraic notation, they'll use real short variable names like t. So they'll say d of t, so that's just another way to say the um, function d for a set time, so they'll say it's a d of t equals 80t. So what they do is Sometimes they'll, uh, if you have a variable and a number, you can actually put those two together, and we everybody just knows it's multiplication. That's why racket notation is a lot easier because it's explicit. The computer doesn't guess, but with people, we can make them guess. So, or you, or you just get used to it. It's just like learning a different language. Um, and so, one of the things that you can do is that you, instead of having to say 80 times t or 80 star t for multiplication. If it's a number and a variable, you can actually just put them right next to each other and everybody knows that that's time. That, that's multiplication, that that's times. And so that's how we'd write in algebra that same formula. The d of t, so the distance function at a given time is 80 times the t. Okay. So um, write two additional examples. So here's an example of distance of five. Um, write two additional examples. Pause now and write two additional examples um, in the place provided in your workbook. Okay. So. Um, well, we, we just went over this algebra syntax, and so there's some more examples. And then I showed you that sometimes you can even leave out the X and just do ADT. All right, so now let's do another one. This is on page 40 in your workbook. So a rocket traveling from Earth to Mars at 80 miles per second. Write a function that describes the time the rocket has been traveling as a function of distance. So this is similar to the other one, so let's um, set up for that. I'll just, let's see, no, let's erase that. All right, write a function that describes the time, so I'm just gonna call it time. 
and it's going to take in a number and give out a number. So number. It's going to return a number. And we want to produce the time, travel time, how about that, travel time, given the distance. Okay, so let's do an example. Um, given the distance, um, of a rocket traveling at 80 miles per second. I just want to make sure to get everything in there if it's going to be part of the calculation. All right, uh, let's do an example. Oh, nope, time. All right, let's see. Given a distance. So let's see, how long will it take to travel 80 miles? So in 80 miles, all right, since it's going 80 miles per second, in 80 miles it'll be able to go um, I mean, and, and, and um, 80 miles per second to go 80 miles will take one second. All right, so that's going to be 80 divided by 80. Now, I'm not exactly clear yet on which one is on the top. Right, so let's so let's think about let's do another example, and we want to make it 800. How long will it take to go 800 miles? Time, 800. All right. So it's going to take longer. If it took one second to go uh, 80 miles, then we know it's going to take longer to go 800 miles. So that means we want a number bigger than one. So that means that the distance is going to go on the top. Right, so it's going to be 800 divided by 80. Um, and let's do one more. Let's see. Let's see how long it'll take to go 1,000 miles. It'll take 1,000 divided by 80. So here's the distance. And that's the rate that it's traveling. So. Um, distance is this thing that's changing. So we can say define the distance is what we said, right? I'm, I'm sorry, define time. Time. And it's going to take in distance. And we're going to divide the distance by 80. And let's just double check that. So I'm going to move that up here and hit run. Okay, so that worked. All right, let's keep going. Right, and they showed us, so let's, let's just go over what they did. So it, the time took a number and a number, took in a number and returns a number. All right. Ah, let's, uh, let's actually, let's look at this, this in algebra syntax. All right, so time is the function name. Distance equals 
distance divided by 80. So now, so that's a completely, that's a, a fine algebraic way of looking at it. A lot of times they may even make a formula that's even smaller where they'll say um, time of d equals d over 80. And that's fine. That's just the distance divided by 80. So these are all the same thing, right? It's just, you know, I, I, I'm calling distance d here. And I can even make it T. Say T of D. So in, in algebra notation, you have to kind of give what you're talking about. I can say a function T and a distance D. In computer programming, we spell it out a lot of times just to make it clear. In algebra, a lot of times they don't. So that would be the algebra way to say it. So once your function is set up, it's easy to plug in the values and get the answers back. In fact, with most word problems, the hard part is setting up the function in the first place. But luckily, the design recipe makes that um, setting up the function a lot easier. So we've used it to set up two different functions, um, which can be used to give us answers in terms of distance or time. Defining functions is like building tools, which you can use to solve simple problems or combine them together to solve more complex ones. Suppose you wanted to know how far the rocket traveled in six seconds. Which of the two functions would you use? All right, far, well, we had a, a function before where we used the distance, right? So that's the one we'd use. We use the D function. What if you want to know how long it takes for a rocket to go a thousand miles? Well, in that one, we'd use the time function, right? So if we want the time out of it, we'd use the time function. All right, turn to page 41 in your workbook and read the word problem there. A rocket leaves Earth headed for Mars at 80 miles per second. At the exact same time, an asteroid leaves Mars traveling towards Earth moving at 70 miles per second. If the distance from the Earth to Mars is 50 million miles, how long will it take them to meet? So really, there's only one extra part in this. Well, they, they used a big number, so which is 50 million instead of one or two or three. Um, but that's, that's not a big deal. And we just have one extra part. So let's walk through the design recipe and do the same thing that we would, would do. Um, so what would we call this function? How about if the distance, how long will it take? So we want to know how long it'll take for them to collide. So let's call it collision time. Collision time. And it's going to, how long will it take? Um, if the distance, so it's going to give us a distance, which is a number, and we want to know how long, which is minutes or seconds, and that's also a number. So we're just going to take in a number, and we're going to give out a number. And we want to produce the, how long will it take, um, the number of seconds. So produce the time in seconds. Now let's just say the time. Let's produce the time. For a rocket and asteroid to collide if they start 50 million miles apart. All right, and we need to give some details about that. A rocket traveling 80 miles per second let's make this two lines and then asteroid traveling 70 miles per second
All right, I think that might be everything we need to know. All right, so one thing to think about when we've got these two things that are going either towards each other or after each other, or apart from each other, is that are they going toward each other or away from each other? So they're going to collide, so they're going toward each other. So when we think about two things going toward each other, their um, speeds are going to add. So their, their rates um, are going to add. So they're getting closer by 80 plus 70. So 80 plus 70 is 150. So they're actually, that's how fast they're getting close, right? Because if one was standing still, then it would, you know, if the asteroid was standing still, then the rocket would be getting closer to it at 80 miles per second. If the rocket was standing still, the asteroid would be getting closer to it at 70 miles per second. Together, they're getting closer to each other at 80 plus 70. Okay. So let's look at an example. And with these traveling ones, it made sense to me. Collision time. I always forget that first. There. All right, collision time. And with this first number that comes in is how far apart they start. Right, so that's, um, so instead of do 50, let's do if they were 150 miles apart. 150 miles apart. All right, well, if they're 150 miles apart, then they would run each other in one second, right? So they're going 150. So let's say then, and before, when we wanted to, we wanted to divide the distance by how fast they're going. So um, they're 150 miles apart. And then what's on the bottom is 80 plus 70. Does that make sense? So in one second, right? In one second, they're going to hit each other. Because that's a really short distance for an asteroid and a rocket, right? So let's do now 10 times that. All right, they're 10 times farther apart. That means it should take them 10 times as long to hit each other, right? So 1500. Oh, oh. Plus 80, 70. I feel like I. Is that right? Okay. Good. All right. Now. They start 50,000 miles apart. Well, it seems like we could do an example like this. Fifty. One, Yeah, so it turned out that we don't even need to write our uh, function, right? Because all we would put into the function is this exact example, right? So they only ask us, they didn't ask us to write a, um, a function. They asked us to calculate this, this distance, and it looks like this is going to be the answer. So I'm just going to copy this part. And I think that's the answer, 333,333 miles. Oh, sorry, uh, seconds. So 333,000 seconds is how long it would take them to collide, which that makes sense because 150 miles uh, per hour per second isn't very fast compared to 50 million miles. So um, we could go ahead and finish our... Um, function definition, but actually this is what they asked us to provide was um, how many seconds it would be.
So if we had a function, we could just plug it in, but we decided to design it using those examples. Okay, so they talk about how fast they're going toward each other, which is 150. And like they point out, this is just like our time function from before. That's why we used our division. And we already saw that we didn't even need to actually write our um, function once we did the design recipe. So let's see in your book. So if you haven't already done it, go ahead and do um, that, that second one. And then go ahead and do the design recipe for this third one. Okay, and including some examples. And then finish it out with the formula that we got by calculating, um, by, by working through this. Um, and do the formula in algebra notation. So usually when they say, if we say uh, procedure, like racket procedure, then we mean in racket language. But if they say formula, then it'll probably be an algebra formula. So write the algebra formula that we got from that. So next time, in this unit, um, you started uh, to see how functions are useful in writing animations, um, and functions help produce information, such as the height of the rocket, and you got extra practice writing functions using the design recipe, and so now you're ready to start writing functions that will move the elements in your own game. So that's what we'll work on next week.